our scanner has picked up a transmission originating from a nearby system. In fact, from this system, because we've traveled the five jumps. It would be wise to investigate this mysterious signal further. That's right, we found a Serpentis Corporation hydroponic site, a Serpentis DED 5 of 10 in Rattalos, which is great because Rattalos is a very quiet system and it's just two jumps from our current operating base over in Anki in Solitude. A 5 of 10 is a big step up from any PvE content we've run so far, but we're going to try it in Thelma the Thorax. This is the fit. Now, it's mostly meta modules. We do have the Dead Space C-type Afterburner, and we do have the Dead Space A-type multi-spectrum coating. Hopefully, those are going to make up for the fact that we don't have any T2 modules in this fit at all. If you're playing along from home and want to try running a 5 of 10 in a Tech 1 Cruiser, replacing all of these modules with Tech 2 would probably get you to about the same power level, actually a bit higher of a power level than what we have with this mix of meta and dead space. So if this works, which I certainly don't know that it will, but if it works and you want to try your hand at a DD 5 of 10 in a Tech 1 Cruiser, in a Thorax, a Tech 2 version of this fit is probably your ticket. Now we've got a pretty respectable tank for a Tech 1 Cruiser with a single meta armor repair. One key bit of this fit is that we've got the thermal armor hardener which we're using because we're fighting serpentus who do primarily thermal damage if you're looking to do like a 5 of 10 or something of a different faction obviously you would switch the hardener out for whatever type of damage they deal primarily but even with this pretty decent armor tank we're really going to be dependent on range as our primary way of mitigating damage with thorium loaded in our guns and with both of our tracking computers activated, our rail guns can hit up to 37 kilometers for max damage and 59 kilometers at optimal plus one fall off, which means half damage. 59 kilometers is our half damage limit. And then out at another 22 beyond that, we'll be doing close to zero damage, but our targeting range is only 63 kilometers. So anywhere within that 63 kilometer targeting range, Thelma should be able to put out pretty decent DPS. So our main strategy is going to be staying 50 to 60 kilometers away from anything. Let's see how that goes. This is Bill. Bill wants to build a Cinnaball and join the Angel Cartel cause in Zarzak, but he's not making it easy on himself. The Serpentis are doing quite well for themselves in this narcotics department. Trafficking sites are bustling with activity and security. Security forces should be mindful of any Sarpati family enforcers. Now given that this is a DED site, much like the three of tens we've run many times before, the final room is going to have a named boss who if we can take out the named boss without clearing the rest of the pocket, the named boss is going to drop all of the good loot. But as always, I'm getting ahead of myself. It's time to see if it can survive room one. These sites are usually run in something significantly stronger, like a Tech 3 cruiser or a battle cruiser even. A Tech 1 cruiser is definitely low on the power scale for a site like this, but the Serpentis DED 5 of 10 does not have any ships in it that should be able to warp scram me. So I'm going to start by pulling a bit of range, and then I'm going to make sure that I align out to something. I'm going to pick Rattalos 3 Customs Office. And then if things get hairy at any moment, I can immediately warp out. Now I'm going to release my Hobgoblin 5s. I'm going to release my 5 Hobgoblin 2s. Sorry, they aren't Tech 5 Hobgoblins. And we're just going to start picking this stuff off. If things start to get hairy, I'm going to be sure to recall my drones before I need to warp out. Uh, so they have time to get back to me. I don't leave them behind. Usually the NPCs in these sites won't go out of their way to shoot your drones. But if my drones are shooting them and I leave grid, then the NPCs will often start shooting the drones. So then by the time I get back, one or more of my almost irreplaceable Hobgoblin 2s could easily be dead. I'm going to set my default keep at range to 45 kilometers. So far it's working well. Almost nothing is dealing damage to me. Okay, I'm going to start aligning back to Gratalos 3.
Warp Flotilla General is sensor dampening us now. That's going to put a bit of a damper on our kite everything plan. A couple of frigates are getting close to us. We're going to selectively send our drones after them. We haven't even gotten down to half shields at any point in this run yet, I don't think. It's working out quite well for us. The Corellum Chief Infantry seems to be able to hit us at 40 kilometers, and the Rear Admiral hit us pretty good too. But so far, it's not really a concern at all. We still haven't gotten into armor, which is where our tank actually is. Everything about the battleships is down. I think this guy is the guy who was jamming us too. Not jamming, this is the guy who was dampening us, so we'll take him out first. I had my keep at range distance set to 45 kilometers. I'm lowering it to 40 kilometers because I noticed that when this guy does disrupt us, when he does sensor dampen us, our maximum range drops to 44 kilometers. He doesn't seem to be able to hit us at all at 40 kilometers. So we'll just sit out here and pick him off and then fly over and pick off the other two guys. So far, the first room seems very straightforward. Now, these battleships aren't just, you know, speed bumps on our way to the next room. They also have quite decent bounties on them, which is a big part of why I wanted to be running these 5 of 10s in the first place. When we were running the 3 of 10s before, they gave us great loot, like the Corelli A-Type 5 mm micro warp drive that we have on uh, Fiona now, and also the Corelli A-Type small armor repairer that we have on Fiona. But because the three of tens are filled almost entirely with NPC frigates, uh, when you run them, the bounty reward is almost zero. If you're selling stuff to the market, the three of tens are so valuable. But if you're just trying to build up ISK from bounties and from selling the overseer effects, the three of tens are not the way to go. Maybe the 5 of 10 is. But right now I'm just keeping these guys at range and they can hit me out at 40 kilometers. Um, in later rooms, if the damage becomes more substantial, which I'm certain it will, I'll be intentionally flying in order to keep my transversal up so they hit me less well and I can still hit them with my rail guns. As it stands right now, my single armor rep is having no problem at all keeping up with the damage output of these two battleships. So just sitting still at 40 kilometers from them, keep at range, is maximizing my da damage output. I'm not, and I'm not worried about theirs, so I might as well just tank it. So with Thorium, at range in Thelma the Thorax right now, especially with these five Hobgoblin 2s, my DPS is actually a little bit higher than my DPS is on Fiona the Catalyst at point-blank range with blasters, which means that as long as I'm killing battleships during the like few minutes that I'm waiting for these battleships to go down, I'm actually probably bringing in more ISK per hour than I am belt hopping in Fiona. Now, of course, the five of tens, I can't just line up and knock down. I got this one as an escalation from running Serpentis Dens, and I had to run about 10 of them before this happened. But when I have five tens available to me, if, if I'm able to easily get to them in the thorax, and if this, <laughs> if I don't die in room two or three, if it turns out this strategy actually does work, then I think running five of tens are going to be totally worth our time, even just on the bounty front. And they offer more than bounties. The Overseer effects that we've been pulling out in the uh, three of tens, like I said, you get about a million, maybe two million esque worth of Overseer effects in those low level DD sites. But in a five of ten, a six of ten, even a single Overseer's box from that final boss is going to be worth a good chunk of change. All right, room one down. To the acceleration gate we go. 
we're not gonna forget our drones. <laughs> I really, it would really be like a Pyrrhic victory for me if we managed to clear the site but lose the drones in the process. Although we do now have the combat scanner probes <laughs> in Anki, but nonetheless. Let's just get in the habit of not leaving our Hobgoblin 2s behind. 4.3 million X bounty tick. See? That's <laughs> that's a pretty promising sign for the economic viability of 5 of 10s. Whatever the Serpentis are getting out of these asteroids, it must be an integral component of their product. There's enough equipment here to support a small planetary nation. And enough ships to provide a small planetary army. All right, is our customs office still a good align out? Seems to be. We're gonna pull range on the battleships for sure and start picking off the smaller stuff. Oh, multiple things are dampening us now. That's gonna be a problem. Okay. How are we going to deal with this? Tank is definitely being tested. It's mostly the battleships that are actually hitting us. Good, the tank is stabilizing. So I think we're going to have to pull a fair bit of range. Get out of range of the battleships. Ideally out of damping range of the battleships for that matter. And then pick the small stuff off as it flies towards us. You can see we are spreading them out. I'm going to be carefully watching to see the range at which these core vice admirals... Stop. There we go. It seems that here... 80 kilometers out from those battleships... Oh, I was going to say, it looks like they're no longer dampening us, but someone started damping us, dampening us again. Oh, we'll burn out further still. This is definitely not going to be a fast process. I may have gotten myself in over my head. <laughs> it's the Corvite Admirals who are dampening us. And they can damp us from, from so far. We're, quadru we're quadruple damped now. Okay. With the damps on us... Our target range is still like 40 kilometers. So we're going to wait here. Let the fast stuff start to catch up. And just fight them within damp range. Might even fly back in a little bit. These damps. I'm damped down to 33 kilometer targeting range now. 27 kilometers. Okay. I've killed all the frigates and destroyers. I think the new plan has to be going after the things that are dampening us. She's going to have to do a little bit of a flyby here. Be within targeting range of the Flotilla Admiral. After Burner on to keep up transversal. Now actually at this range we're better off using antimatter. I don't want to let, th let things get too close to me, but I have to stay relatively close to the Admiral. I'm multi-damped now. The drones are still chipping away, at least. Now, these guys here were also dampening me, so they're up next. Okay, when my transversal is good, almost nothing seems to be hitting me. I guess I'm going to try orbiting this guy at 25. 
and see if I can still hit him decently well with that much transversal, and if I can tank the site while doing that. It will mean that I end up sort of flying close to some of the other guys. But so far my tank's holding quite steadily. Okay, Orbit 25. Oh, not Orbit 1500. Orbit 25 seems to actually be working reasonably well. It took us a little while to find the right tactic, but I think we finally got it. I'm not at all convinced this tactic's gonna hold for room three, though, which I know has some additional surprises. After this guy's down, we're gonna move on to the battle cruisers. That should be all of the dampers off the field. Although I don't think we need to pull back out to range, so long as we can tank them at this range. I'm quite content to stay within 25 kilometers. Seven point four million is bounty tick. Okay, that's all the baddies in room two clear. We have a 177 kilometer flight over to the acceleration gate, which is probably just about enough time to talk about what room three is going to look like. The thing that makes the five of tens difficult, and they're all somewhat similar, all of the factions five of tens, they're a little bit different, but still, it's a mix of these battle cruisers, battleships, cruisers and they'll be facing each faction's individual E-War, which annoyingly is sensor dampening for Serpentis. I don't think any of them have disruption or scram, certainly the Serpentis one doesn't. But once you go into that last room, when you land on that grid, in addition to the huge swarm of battleships and battlecruisers and cruisers, there's going to be a couple of stasis web towers, which is going to make our ability to mitigate any of the damage almost impossible almost non-existent. So as soon as we land, we're going to be aligning out to somewhere that we can warp off to in case the incoming damage is overwhelming. And then job one is taking out those stasis web towers. Once we do that, we can pull some range and we can look for the, uh, for the site boss. And then hopefully with a little bit of tactical flying, we can take out the site boss without having to clear the final room. So it's going to be a question of whether we can survive staying on grid at all when we first land. And if we can, then room three should actually be the fastest of the three. We're going to let our capacitor recharge a bit too. You've done great so far, Thelma. I am extraordinarily impressed. Another 7 million esque tick. 6.7. Now I do have some DPS and some tank drugs in my hold that we still have kicking around from those uh, Capsuleer Day sites. Kill an Enforcer for some Patty family. Looks like you get two today. All right. Web Towers. Aligned to our warp out location. Turn on all our modules. Lock up the web towers. Whoa, whoa.
Warp out. Okay. Well, we did some damage there. <laughs> Let's try that again. Okay, same tactic. We're going to do it more quickly this time with less talking. And we're going to heat everything. If it takes us a couple of warp outs, but we manage to clear those stasis towers, then things can get a lot easier really fast. Preheating the hardener and preheating the armor rep. The hardener will turn on as soon as we land. The armor rep, I obviously won't turn on until we need it. down. Okay, well this time we'll, when we land, we'll only be double webbed instead of triple webbed. <laughs> Hopefully that helps survive a little bit better. I'm switching to Thorium. I'm gonna try a different. I'm gonna try finding a different warp out bookmark, different align point. So I need to be flying towards the stasis towers as soon as I can, so that once the uh, dampeners land, I don't find myself unable to shoot the stasis towers at all. If I can take out one more, if I can be taking out one stasis tower each time I fly into the site. If I can get one stasis tower down before I warp out, then that would be progress. And I killed one stasis tower the first time I went in there, but the last two times, those damps. Ugh. So my excitement about the ISK return of this site was, I admit, predicated on the idea that I was going to be able to do it in about an hour. Sort of, maybe I was hoping, I was hoping to do it in like 40 minutes. It's been an hour and a half now. That's really cutting into the profits here. They better start. Two down. Now let's see if the DPS drops to somewhere I can... Okay, now I need to get out of here. But then we'll stop at a station and wrap up and things might look better. <laughs> Finally. <laughs> All right. Now we'll see what this room really looks like. <laughs> so we got plenty of 7 million ticks. Now we just got 160,000 this tick because the only thing we've killed in the last 20 minutes is a couple of stasis towers. Whew. So now that we finally have some ability to actually move in this final room, our immediate, 
our immediate plan is pull range from all of this DPS and then reevaluate. I'm actually going to heat the AB for a couple of cycles. All this stuff in 20 kilometers range of us, we want to be as far from that as possible. And there's the Serpati family enforcer. That's the guy we need to kill. Come on. Come on, tank. <sighs> hmm. This may not be possible. I'm going to try flying in a slightly different direction the next time. Maybe if we align towards our other warp out spot, which is at more of a perpendicular angle to most of the DPS when we land. Maybe then we'll be able to mitigate some more damage. So I don't think the problem is that the battleships had transversal on us. I think the problem is just the raw DPS from those cruisers and battle cruisers. I'm going to give that one more shot. I'd be very sad to give up on this now. This time I'm going to heat my tank from the get-go too. Oh, it might be working. Tank starting to recover. We're st we've stabilized. Amazing. Okay. <laughs> oh, man. We didn't quite burn out our AB. Now, this is the guy we need to kill. I need a bookmark in here just in case. It's gonna be a bit of a fly around, I think, to try and isolate him. Or I guess we pull the small stuff away first. Try and take it out with Thorium. He's only a battle cruiser. If we can at least pull him away from the battleships, maybe we can take him down pretty quick. Pretty sure this is dead space. I don't think we're gonna be able to warp on grid in here. At least we're fighting far away from those towers. That's already a benefit. Nothing's hitting us yet. I think we can launch the drones. I'm going to align back to our warp out spot. Something's in range to be damping us again. Those flipped. Yeah, those damps. I was just about to say this seemed totally untenable when it looked like we weren't going to be able to pull range. But by heating everything, we just barely got up somewhere where we could take a breath. And now it looks totally doable, except we're being damped again. I'm not even sure if they're is a range <laughs> such that those uh, core flotilla admirals won't be able to damp us. But for now, as long as this is working, I wish that the uh, Serpate family enforcer, though, would separate himself from the rest of the pack. We've taken out all the frigates and destroyers. Pulling the drones back. 
I'm just going to fly away for a bit and see how much they string themselves out. This flying away and stringing them out though plan is more difficult when we're in dead space. So that means even if I do get the Serpate family enforcer in a spot by himself, I'm going to have to circle around in order to actually catch him. I can't just do one of those clever on-grid warps. I am curious though, now that we're so far from those towers, I'm going to try swinging back and seeing if I can't get within thorium range of the boss while still tanking this while still tanking this fire. I feel like a lot of the DPS might have been from those towers. Look at this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, like twelve towers. I feel like we could keep transversal up on all these dudes. I might actually be able to snipe Sapatai family enforcer. Without running into serious tank problems, I mean, that's the hope. We might as well be picking these guys off one at a time, though, as we fly by. Okay. We're taking basically no damage right now. Setting in the drones, too. It looks like all we, really, all we really needed to do was pull them all away from those towers. This is gonna work. are on us now. I'll make sure we don't fly back into range of those towers. Maybe a little bit of a circling motion here. Oh, something hit us hard. the transversal up on the battleships. Stay a good 30 or so kilometers away from the cruisers. And we got this figured out. Oh, we're in armor now. We have to keep an eye on that. So this, the amount of damage we're taking is still easily tankable. So Patty Family Enforcer, time to collect his loot. Which means we're gonna bookmark this first. Ha! <sighs> oh man. Come back, my drones. We are definitely We are definitely <laughs> warping out, letting this site despawn. And coming back in. Wow. That was intense. Okay, the site has despawned. It has been two hours, almost to the minute, since I first warped to this escalation. Let's see if it was all worth it. <laughs> it might have been. It might have been.